All right, today we're doing a pot roast. Um, we'll be cooking it in uh, an enamel coated cast iron Dutch oven, seven quart, which is gonna be a little bit small for that roast, but I'm gonna make it work. That's a three and a half pound chuck roast. There's the uh, ingredients, all I'm putting in it, which is one clove of garlic. Normally I put more than that, but well, it's a little strong sometimes, so I'm just going with one clove. Uh, some beef stock, salt and pepper. We're going to be searing it in that pan on my induction cooker. And then we'll take it to the oven for about three and a half hours at 325. But it looks like it might all come together. I believe once it's all said and done, we'll be able to eat it. If we don't, then we can throw it away. And that's my, on the other side of the kitchen is my tamales I got going on today. They're making noises. But I got some tamales steaming. Got another layer of those in the pan below. And that's going to be lunch along with a few other things people are bringing. So this is going to be my, my supper. A little early for it. I'm going to get it done a little early. But it, hey, pot roast reheats better than anything in the fridge. In fact, it might get better with time. But we'll see. Okay, I did leave out one ingredient I, I use. <laughs> As you can see, I uh, sear this in about two tablespoons of lard. And I mean, you can use vegetable oil, you can use olive oil, whatever you want, but the lard will withstand heat a lot better. You can get it a little hotter, and it seems to make it a little crispier. You know, it kind of gives it a better seal, and that's all you're looking for when you're braising anyhow. So just braise it in whatever you choose. I happen to have some lard, so yeah, it sounds bad, but hey, it's not much. I went ahead and seasoned the roast with a decent amount of black pepper and uh, sea salt. I think it helps it uh, seal it up also. Now all we're doing is just kind of waiting on the oil to shimmer a little bit. Just get a little bit of a, in fact, it's probably pretty close right now if you can see how it kind of shimmer is shimmering and looks like it's you know you honestly don't know if you can see that in this picture or not but I think you can and uh, that's what we're looking for so we're fixing to do some searing that's what you want you want some you want it sizzling when it hits and I've got this particular uh, induction cooktop set at on, on my, next to the highest setting. I, the, the highest setting seems to you know get get it in spots. I don't I don't want it. You know, brown one area a little gets it too hot in one spot. You know, so I think backing off one helps. But either way, we're gonna let that sear on that side for about three minutes. Then I'll flip it over. Okay, that's after about three minutes on that side, and it, I, I might have left it a little longer, but it, as you can see, it, it was getting a little darker in the middle, but it's seared fine. I mean, I, it's just really sealing up the outside edges, and that's about all you can do. By the way, that's a bone-in chuck roast. A lot of people you know, don't like the bone-in. To me, it, it adds flavor. You can see the marrow right, the marrow right there. That's, that's flavor, you know what I'm saying? So it, it ain't going to hurt and that's what it's about. So we'll let this one go another couple of minutes and uh, flip it over and then we'll deglaze that pan and we'll put it all back in there and we will put the vegetables in and set it in the oven. Okay, I've pulled the roast out and now we're going to deglaze with just, I'm just going to use this uh, beef stock and I'm going to just pour a little bit in there for now just wet the bottom of it and then just scrape it around a little bit. I might, I might have to put the camera down to keep from making a mess. So, but anyhow, you get the concept. You hit the heat again if you need to and just knock them crumbs and that stuff off the bottom and get it back into your liquid and back into the flavor of the broth. And that's really all there is to it. In fact, I'm probably not even going to have to reheat this pan. Just getting it to where all the stuff that's stuck to the bottom of the pan turns loose. 
and then we'll put it all back in there. I'll put everything in there and set it in the oven. But as you can see, it's, I cleaned it pretty clean right there. I may get a little bit more after I set the camera down, but I, honestly, I think I got it. It's pretty, pretty good, and that way you get to use all those uh, bits on the bottom. Uh, now, if some of you that were paying attention may have noticed that I left out a pretty crucial item in my first ingredient list that I didn't have in there, which is red potatoes in a pot roast. You just about got to have them, or I do. And uh, that's like four red potatoes. I cut them in half. That, that's kind of the reason I, I uh, forgot them, because I don't cut them till the last minute, because they'll turn brown. So they're cut, and I'm fixing to put those in here on top of the other things. I know some people add these later, but to me, it, it works just as good or even better because I think the potatoes, you know, they, they overcook. Yeah, they do, but they have a, they, they get all these juices in them. And I, to me, that's what a pot roast is about. And there, there's no such thing as overcooking a potato, if you ask me. But we'll see when we bring it out of there. I'm going to put the mushrooms in there, add some broth. We're going to go into the thing with it. Alrighty, there it is with the mushrooms, the garlic, the onions the carrots and the potatoes. Now all I'm going to do is I put so also added some salt and pepper pretty good bit of both and I'm just going to try and cover in fact I'm going to use one of these just I've got two but I'm only going to use one because if you can see it came up to right there which once these potatoes are all cooked they'll add more liquid and uh, I think it'll be very close to uh, about what I want so, what I do is put the lid on it and put it in the oven and check on it in three or four hours. All right, there we go. It's in the oven, 325. I'm going to put a three and a half hour timer on it. And as soon as that goes off, we'll definitely be pulling it out and looking at it. Again, 325, three and a half hours. Okay, it's been three and a half hours. And uh, the finished product. Mm-hmm. That looks like pot roast to me, baby. It looks fantastic. And I can't wait to try some of it. But it's going to sit here with this lid on it for about an hour. And... Uh, I'll try some then. So, there it is, though. Uh, John's Pot Roast. <laughs> it uh, looks great. Well, we'll uh, look at it later when it's uh, on a plate. All right, there's a finished product. Fantastic, man. It, it, it tastes great. That You can't beat it. That's, that's what it looks like when it's in a plate. And uh, I'm going to be honest with you. You can leave it in that pot right there and set it in the refrigerator. And uh, tomorrow night, and stick it back in the oven at 200 degrees for a couple of hours and, or an hour or so, and it, it'll be just as good, if not better. That's, this is a fantastic dish, man. I'm telling you, this is great. But anyhow, <clears throat> there you go. John's uh, pot roast. And uh, it's good. It's simple and very good. That was, that's what matters. Anyhow, y'all have a good day. Say so you bye.